four years ago, maybe five years ago, a documentary I made got on Netflix worldwide, which was very exciting. And in this video, I'm going to break down the 10 things I learned making my first independent documentary and hopefully provide some information that you may find interesting and helpful. So here it goes. So we got a comedy show to kill? Hey! I thought you wanted to let people know what the hell you talking about. First, just a little bit of context. So the doc is essentially about four guys trying to do stand-up comedy for the first time, all while myself, who's one of the four people, is about to become a dad. He's absolutely right. And what made the documentary more real and have more depth and heart to it was one of the other guys, Sean, Sean Menard, found out that his father was dying of cancer. I think about him like, wow, this guy's passing away and I'm finding out things now about him. Like, he's essentially a stranger even though he's my dad. So while I was becoming a dad, he was losing his dad and all that is kind of packaged into this, um, this journey that we all took. Delivery? Delivery? It's really important. It's everything. Delivery is everything. Delivery is the only thing. It's almost like the most important thing that you can have. Baby's out. What is it? So if you have the goal of making a documentary, here's some advice that you may find helpful. Number one, just start filming. So with that advice, I don't mean just hit record and, and start filming without any idea of what you want. Because for me, it actually took about three years of the idea kind of being on the back burner and just trying to figure it out before I actually hit record. Three years ago, a friend of mine was like, hey, we should all try and do stand-up comedy. It'd be hilarious. And I was like, that'd be a wicked documentary. But ultimately, you want inertia on your side and you just have to start rolling. Number two, go where your story takes you. This isn't a rule, it's more of just like a value or a mindset. Because uh, for my project, it originally started with myself and three others going on this comedic, hopefully hilarious, comedic journey. Have you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy? Yeah. You have? <laughs> um, good. Then this is the documentary for you. However, when we started rolling, as I mentioned, we discovered that one of the other guys was losing his father to cancer. Oh my god, that's I'm insane. Like, okay, well, like, how long does he have? She's like, anywhere from a week to three months. So then it became a question of, well, what is this doc about? What should it be about? And do we go in the direction that we originally planned or do we veer off and see where this story takes us? Ultimately, we chose to go in the direction that the story was taking us. And I think the film is much, much deeper and much better because of it, but it definitely changed what the film was originally. What, what, what would you have done if you had more time? Well, I'd have been totally different. I'd have the family today if I had it totally different. Number three, imagine you're making a scripted narrative film. Now this may sound strange or contrived for a true documentarian, and it probably is, but for me, structure and story arc is very important. Ultimately, I wanted my doc to feel like a movie, to have the story points and the beats that we're all accustomed to as movie watchers, so I wanted my film to feel like that. So what I actually used was a thing called Blake Snyder's Beat Sheet and it comes from the book Save the Cat and it essentially just breaks down various beats that most films hit from the opening image all the way to the last image. So this is something that I focused more on in the edit but to have these ideas floating around in your mind is probably worthwhile in pre-production and production. Number four, prepare for a long journey. Um, making a film isn't an easy endeavor. I personally thought I was gonna shoot for two to three months and then edit it in like three months and I would be done in six months. That wasn't the case. And knowing that the journey will be long will hopefully help you be a little selective in choosing which project you're gonna take on. Now, don't let that stop you from taking on any project but the journey is long and a good and bad film take just as much time. So make a good one. Number five, keep your budget ultra low. Every dollar that goes out is another dollar that you have to bring in before you can ultimately see a profit. And with this film, it was essentially self-financed and there was a Kickstarter campaign. And to be perfectly honest, you may never see a profit. So it's not rocket science, being financially responsible and knowing where your money is going is going to help you in the long run Plus the monetary restrictions that you're facing will force you to be creative and come up with other solutions that you wouldn't have done normally and that you would have just thrown money at. Besides, story is worth more than gear. Oh, and a little asterisk here on budget. 
Even when you're done production and you're done your edit, there's still a large chunk of change that you need at the end to cover insurance, a lawyer, music clearance, color, mix. And just an FYI, the cost of the lawyer was more than it took to shoot the film. Number six, form a trusted team and keep it small. This is an obvious thing to say, but there are so many things that can go wrong when making a film. And there's a bunch of things that will make you quit or question why you're doing this thing. So a trusted crew and co-producer will not only help you get the film off the ground, but it will help you get it to the finish line, which is ultimately the goal. And shout out to Shane Cunningham for being that person and also Luke Myers, thank you. Number seven, the good and bad of Kickstarter. For me, I turned to Kickstarter to try and raise funds but also as a marketing tool. So I set a goal of 16,000, but sadly, after the dust settled, the majority of my backers were friends and family, which is wonderfully sweet, and I'm so grateful for it, but at the same time, it's kind of uh, unfortunate and sad because you end up feeling like a charity where you're walking around with an open hat. If you're cool with that, then cool. So with Kickstarter, if you have a successful campaign, you have to fulfill all the rewards to your backers. My advice would be keep those rewards digital as much as you can. For me, I actually had DVDs and posters and t-shirts like this that people could be rewarded, but you gotta ship those and you gotta print those things and it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort and it actually costs a fair bit of money. So I suggest just keep things digital. A, a digital version of your film, a digital signed poster, a digital insert your creative idea here. So just give yourself the restriction of not having to ship anything and see what you come up with. But still make t-shirts because they're walking billboards and they still do work. Number eight, get a good lawyer or the value of a good lawyer. So there are a few things that I had no idea about prior to making this film, and that was things like the need of a lawyer, insurance, title searches, all these things that cost money that you weren't originally anticipating or considering, because you're like, all I wanna do is make a movie. But having a good lawyer is super important, especially for what I was doing and what I was trying to do, which was use clips in my film that I didn't own or have the rights to use. Speaking in front of a crowd is considered the number one fear of the average person. So the lawyer is going to write an opinion letter which ultimately allows the film to be insured because nobody wants to get sued. Death is number two. Also a good lawyer is just great from a networking standpoint so having a solid relationship with them will likely help you in the long run. I would highly recommend the law firm that I went with. They're essentially the best fair use firm. Uh, they're called Donaldson and Califf, and I worked with Chris Perez. Number nine, the value of getting distribution. Now I could talk about this for a long time, but I'll try and keep it really short. So my doc didn't get into any big film festival, and that's what I was originally aiming for, and that's where I thought I was gonna get my distribution deal. That didn't happen. However, I did have two distribution offers. One was through my lawyer, and one was through a mutual friend that had also made a film. He put me in contact with his distributor. They watched it, they liked it. So long story short, I had a Canadian and a US distributor. I kind of went with both, one for the US, one for international. I made the wrong decision. Ultimately, hindsight is 2020. I should have, and I wish I just went fully in with the Canadian one. The distributor in the US had a bigger name, but I couldn't help but feel like a small drop in their bucket. So not only did the Canadian distributor get the film on Netflix, but prior to that, the film had a theatrical run in Toronto. It got reviewed by major publications, and I got to feel like a filmmaker for a brief period of time. So shout out to Level Film, Dave Hudicock there. So the takeaway, my suggestion based on my experience would be when faced with a big distribution company or a small one, really look at their business model and figure out, are they trying to just acquire everything they possibly can just to see what hits? Or are they gonna be like a partner and try and like really promote and push your film? So that would be my advice, but to each their own. That's just my advice. Number 10, no money, no problems. Ideally, you're going to make money based on the creative or the film or the documentary that you make, but in reality, you may not. However, the desire to make money can be a great motivating factor because it can help push you to put more time, energy, and effort and get a better end product. But your return on investment may not come in the form of dollars and cents. 
you're more likely to benefit in other ways from making your film. Like this project leads to the next project or could lead to a job offer or even get you a hot date, which isn't the case for me. I'm married with two kids, but I've seen it happen. So those are the top 10 things I learned making my first independent documentary. I hope you found some of those things helpful. If there's any other questions you have, just drop them into the comments and I'll be sure to respond. I don't really promote the documentary very much, but I should. It's on Crave in Canada, but you need the subscription to Stars. And I've actually received some really sweet emails from people around the world writing in saying how much they like the film. And that means a lot. Check it out. Please let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you like it, and I hope you learned something. Anyway, thanks.